Welcome to our Tech Talk. I'm Ian Zhang, a product manager for AR Core, and I'm joined by Nitin Suresh, an engineering manager for AR Core. Today, we're really excited to introduce you all to the Recording and Playback API, which will allow you to take AR anywhere. Before we begin, I wanted to take a moment to recognize the team that helped bring recording and playback to life. Nitin and I are here presenting on behalf of a large cross-functional team spanning engineering, product, business development, UX, quality, developer relations, tech writing, eng prod, legal, policy, privacy, and marketing. We couldn't have launched without the hard work of this entire team. Today, Nitin and I will first chat through some of the basics of augmented reality and AR app development. Then we'll talk about the concept of live AR versus AR anywhere. We'll dive deep on what the Recording and Playback API is and how to use it, and also where we think you, as a developer, will find value from both an app development perspective and a user-facing perspective. Finally, we'll wrap up with recommendations on how to get started and where to go to find more AR-related content. To start off, let's quickly review exactly what augmented reality and Google's AR Core platform are. AR is the capability to perceive the world, both the geometry and the semantics about what is in the world, and then augmenting it. If you've ever captured images or video on your device, then layered virtual items onto the physical world in front of you, you've experienced AR. AR helps improve our everyday lives and creates moments of genuine delight. For example, you can get helpful directions using AR walking navigation in Google Maps Live View. 3D arrows, pins, and street names pop up to help localize and navigate you to your next destination, safely and on time. You can learn about animals in Google Search, bringing immersive 3D animals to life in your living room just by searching for them on Google. The experiences you see here, among many others, were made available on Android devices by leveraging AR Core, Google's developer platform for building mobile augmented reality experiences. AR Core launched in 2017, and is available on more than 850 million devices. So far, AR Core has been installed on over 1 billion devices. As a developer, you're able to build AR experiences directly on Android or using Unity or WebXR. Recording and playback, the topic of today's talk, is available through AR Core and Unity today. So taking AR Anywhere with recording and playback, the title of this session, what does taking AR Anywhere mean, and how is that different from how AR is normally experienced? Well, until now, the vast majority of augmented reality experiences have been live. They required users to be at a certain place, at a certain time, with their phone on, an AR app opened, and in a special AR mode. Say you're at an electronics store, and you want to see whether this TV in front of you fits on a table in your office and matches the aesthetic of your environment. You have options. You could buy the TV and bring it back to your office and hope it fits and looks nice. You could jot down or memorize the dimensions of the TV, then go back to your office and see if it would fit. Or, using the power of augmented reality, you can place a virtual TV on your real-life table and assess the fit, the color, the lighting, all without purchasing or memorizing anything. But you're probably thinking, in order to experience this in AR, I'd have to wait until I got to my office, then try placing the virtual TV. That's 100% right, and that's what we mean by live experiences. You have to be in a certain place at a certain time to experience it. But what if you could remove the live requirement of AR experiences? What if you could enable AR experiences anywhere at any time? Well, as of today, with the launch of the AR Core Recording and Playback API, we're delighted to say you can. Let's think back to the electronic store example. Instead of having to go back to the office to place the virtual TV, Imagine pulling up a pre-recorded video of your office from your native camera gallery, wherever you happen to be, whenever it's convenient to you, and trying out any number of virtual TVs, or for that matter, any number of virtual objects. You could do your AR shopping on a train, commuting to the office, in bed, lounging around. You could literally be anywhere at any time and still be able to experience augmented reality. That's what we mean by taking AR anywhere, and that's the power of recording and playback. Now we'll take some time to dive into the APIs a bit more, explaining what they are, how they work, and what they enable. Normally, AR experiences require a live camera session feed, with a platform that takes that live session feed and runs all the algorithms necessary to discover planes, place virtual objects into the physical world, etc. The recording and playback functionality helps remove the live camera session requirement. The recording API stores a camera's video stream, as well as IMU data, 
planes, or any other custom metadata you, the developer, choose to save in an industry standard MP4 format. Developers can then feed these recorded videos to ARCore via the Playback API, which will treat the MP4 just like a live session feed. To be clear, you can still use a live camera session, as you always have, but now, with this new API, your AR applications can opt to use a pre-recorded MP4 instead of that live session. Now, what does that look like to a user? Think back to our electronic store example. Users can now pull up any video previously taken from their native gallery and be able to edit in or play back AR objects, effects, and filters. Important to mention is that while the recording API requires AR Core, developers aren't locked in to using AR Core's playback API. In fact, you can use any other playback mechanism that is AR compatible. I want to emphasize that one more time because it's important. An MP4 recorded using AR Core's recording API does not require AR Core or even Android running on the playback device. All that's required is a compatible player that can demux an MP4 file and manage the 3D telemetry contained inside, like Android's Exo player. We chose to build on top of the industry standard MP4 format for video playback and editing so that you as a developer can reach as many devices as possible as seamlessly as possible. Now we're going to dive into both the developer and user-facing benefits of using recording and playback, and I'm going to hand it off to Nithin to chat about the developer aspect first. Thanks, Ian. I'm excited to talk about the developer-facing benefits of the recording and playback API. The recording and playback API removes time and space constraints for developers. For developers, you can now record a video using AR Core and then play it back using any compatible device. Building an experience in a shopping mall? No, there's no need to go to the mall every time you want to test a change. Simply record your visit once and then iterate and develop from the comfort of your own desk. We have made recording and playback as easy to invoke as possible with just a few lines of code. AR Core API calls are called as usual for recording, you specify the dataset and recording config during setup. For playback, you specify the dataset during setup. To explain further, here is how you would start a recording in AR Core. As you configure a new AR Core session, you will set a new recording config and a file path for the output MP4. You will ask the AR Core session to start recording on the recording config you set up, and that's it. When you run AR Core, the dataset gets recorded to the output as you desire. We just saw how to record a dataset. Let's now see how you can create an AR Core session and play back this recorded dataset. When you want to play back this recorded dataset, all you have to do is point to the recording path you specified previously. When you resume the AR Core session, AR Core will treat this MP4 as if it's a live session, running tracking algorithms, depth, and generating all the AR frame data you need to develop your AR application. In our code lab, which you can find links for at the end of this session, you can get hands-on with the code and see more complex examples. One of the more powerful examples we talked through is recording an MP4 and also the UI tap data directly into a custom track to access later. To explain further, here is how you would record custom data in AR Core. You would create a data track using a custom UUID and then set a string MIME type on this track. You would add this track to the recording config you created. While the AR Core session is in progress, you can record your custom data on the AR frame as desired. Similarly for playback, while the AR Core session is in progress, you can play back your custom data on the AR frame as desired. Recording and playback shines when it's difficult to reach a certain destination to test your AR experience. As an example, our partner DD, a vehicle for hire company, is opening new venues. Previously, each time DD wanted to test a new feature, a developer or QA tester had to physically go to the airport, capture the walking path of the user, navigate the airport, walk to the baggage carousel, and finally out to the cab ride line. With the recording and playback, DD was able to capture that journey once and send that scene to the development team where they could test and iterate remotely, thereby saving significantly on R&D and travel. Recording and playback also works well for reducing iteration time as an AR developer. Instead of having to record a video for every single Android device you want to support, for every single scenario you want to test, you can record once, and playback on multiple different devices during your iteration phase. This type of control testing environment is important for developers, like a partner Unity, which has to work consistently across many different Android devices. Recording and playback also shines when you need to reduce the manual test burden across AR dev teams. Instead of having to create custom datasets for every new feature, a partners like Snap can leverage pre-recorded datasets 
by launching new features that incorporate depth or the latest tracking improvements from AR Core. Recording and playback can help save time for many AR app development teams, and we are excited to hear your feedback. I will now hand it back to Ian to talk about how recording and playback helps your users directly. Thanks, Nathan. The recording and playback API removes time and space constraints for you as an AR developer. But this API also unlocks new possibilities for your end users. Think of all the times where AR could have brought delight or been helpful, but the user wasn't able to access the experience because they weren't at the right place at the right time. Why should your user have to be standing in their living room to see what virtual furniture looks like there? Now they can record their living room once and then add virtual furniture to the scene whenever they feel like it. For users, this unlocks a new class of AR capabilities that we're calling post-capture AR experiences. To help illustrate the power of post-capture, here are some examples from our partners. Nexus Studios just launched a new application called Voxplop, available today on Google Play. Leveraging recording and playback, the Voxplop app allows multiple users to co-create spatial videos. Users can drop voice messages associated with delightful characters into a pre-recorded space, then send this video to their friends. Their friends can watch and listen as these virtual characters interact with their physical surroundings, and they can also edit in their own voice messages with their own characters. The ability to co-create AR experiences is a wonderful example of the new possibilities available with recording and playback. Another one of our partners, South Korea Telecom, recently leveraged recording and playback to launch a new feature via their Jump AR application, available today on Google Play. Users can record a given environment, then, at their leisure, add delightful AR characters and effects and share them with friends. Notice how the user here doesn't need to be at a certain place or location with their phone out, AR app open, and a live camera session on, but they're still able to experience AR. By removing that live camera session requirement, users are able to unlock new capabilities for AR editing, allowing them to create and access unique AR content at any place and time. That brings us to the end of our session. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Before you head out, here's a few ideas about where you can learn more and get hands-on with recording and playback. We built recording and playback with you, the developer, in mind, and we can't wait to see what you come up with. If you have any demos you'd like to raise to the team's attention, please tag AR Core and REC Play on Twitter. If you're interested in hearing about AR Core overall and what's new beyond recording and playback, check out the session called New Capabilities in AR Core. If you're interested in seeing documentation, sample apps, and demos for recording and playback, check out www.developers.google.com forward slash AR. And if you'd like to get hands-on, please follow the link in the video description to check out the code lab, which will take you step-by-step -step through the API. On behalf of the entire team, thank you so much for tuning in.